build for the final final look in how it is before the system goes in. So there's the H100 water cooler. Right there is your H100. Graphics card's also going underwater. So here we go, we're going to tear it down. Steph's helping me out here. She's taking the old fans off the uh, H100. And we've got some customization happening with those here in a little bit. So, so we're getting the radiator prepped to go into the system. Taking out the plugs. They're just a ship with these little plastic doodads. And we're getting the water nice and hot to uh, put in there and break out all the flux and manufacturing oils out of it. That way they don't end up in the loop. And we're going to do that right now. That's the helper. Look at my tattoo. Now that we've gotten the old cooler out, we have to take all the old thermal paste off. So what I'm using is just um, isopropyl alcohol. I'm just making sure I take as much of it off of the top of the cap as I can. Now you can use expensive cleaners. Arctic Cooler makes one. There's a whole bunch of different ones, but really, cheap alcohol works the best. Now it's time for the water block. So now we're going to do the processor, the actual cap. So we're just going to put some thermal paste in there. About a pea size drop, that's all you need. Sweet water block. Just goes right in there like that. Now to actually secure that bad boy. Now with this block, I actually flipped the EK logo um, because of how I have my idea in my head on how I want the uh, fittings to go. So by default, the in is on the uh, on the left and the out is on the right. Well, I didn't want that, so now it's flipped. The in is on the right, the out is on the left. So I rotated the EK logo the correct way, so it looks nice. And I also changed out the jet plate in there for the uh, the right one for my socket. So. All in all, it's looking pretty snazzy. My big old fat hands are trying in there, getting real hard. Yeah. Okay. And you want nice, even pressure across the processor, so we're good. This is the graphics card, and we're now taking it apart because we're going to put it underwater. So to do that, we have to take the back plate off and the cooler and everything else. All right, we're taking the old thermal paste off here. Same thing we did in the case. And unlike the processor inside the computer, this is actually the die. This isn't a, a cover. So you want to make sure you get this nice and clean. And when you put the thermal paste on to put it all back together, you want to use a little bit more here than you would on, uh, on the CPU side inside the computer. All right. So now what we have to do with this is do thermal pads across the different components on the board. And EK provides the instructions here to kind of show you, you know, where they go corresponding with numbers. So we're gonna have to do some measuring and some cutting. And before we do that, we wanna clean off the parts where those pads are going to go, because they're going to have some oil and grease from the previous pads. So you wanna consult the instructions and clean off all of the components that uh, will be getting new thermal pads because they are greasy and nasty, so. All right, and it looks like this will also be getting some. Future note for anyone who's doing a, a GPU, little tech tip, do the clear side on the top, not the blue, 
because the uh, clear side tends to come off a lot easier than the uh, blue backing. So just for future reference. So we have to take the backing off each and every one of these. So I'm sure a razor blade would work or exacto would work well, but this is what I have on hand. So bust out your thermal paste and then also make sure the block is clean. Block looks pretty good. Alright, now EK recommends doing an X pattern. And I've heard, okay, good. I've heard this stuff can kind of just shoot out in a giant glob, so we're actually going to follow EK's recommendation here. Now, even though it's more thermal paste than I normally ever use, we're going to follow their guidelines. They're the ones who make it, we're going to assume they know what they're talking about. That's a lot of paste. A lot of paste. Alright, now you put your GPU block on. Just like that. Now, what we're going to do, you can thank Jay from Jay's Two Cents for this little tip. Use a box from something you were working on. Set it underneath it. That way you now have a nice flat work area to hold the block on. So thank you, Jay, for that, uh, that sweet, sweet little tip there. Very useful. All right, and this is something weird that uh, to me just makes no sense. So the GPU comes with Phillips. Radiator, Allen keys. You know, whatever. I'm trying to reevaluate my life here because it appears. Okay, I'm wrong. All right, so we also have the matching back plate. And my instructions for that. Nah, 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 right here. So here's a trick to do this a little easier. What you want to do is hold your thermal paste blue side or the thermal jazzy stuff, the thermal interface material upside down, and then push down on the surface. Then it'll leave an outline of pretty much the shape you need. So now I just cut it out. Just like that. And now, since uh, this you can actually do it the easier way, we're going to take the blue piece off while it's out here. Hopefully save ourselves some trouble here in a minute. Pretty good, pretty close. This is kind of like cutting material that's somewhere in between the density of Play-Doh and Silly Putty. It's, it's, it's firm, but not that firm. So it makes it kind of a pain in the butt. You know what Matthew McConaughey says. All right, all right, all right. Back plate goes on just like that. Bust out our other baggie, which contains all the correct screws now that we will need. And it's as simple as, again, I just said it, but Phillips in one part for one piece of it, and freaking Allen's for the other. I just, I don't understand. It's a metric thing, has to be. The commies. All right, we got the loop built. So now, what we want to do to watch out for leaks Put uh, paper towels across everything. That includes down here, underneath the, uh, the resin pump, and underneath this piece here. So this will let us know if we've got any leaks. Now what we're going to do is try to carefully dump this in here. Ooh, did you hear that? Vacuum sealed.
Okay. All right, it helps if you plug the pump in, so. Come on. Okay. Or not. So we're trying to wonder why. Why I'm not getting power to my pump. To figure out why. We're wondering why. Because it's not plugged in. Okay. That's what we want to happen. You don't want to let the pump go dry ever. So let's do that again. Okay. Okay. That's looking pretty good. What you think? Now you see why I bought two bottles of coolant? Yeah. Alright, let's do that again. Looks sharp, doesn't it? She's a running. She looks amazing. And here she is, all complete. The system's now been running for two days. Everything's bled completely. I only had to top the res off once. It wasn't that much. It runs fantastically. I can't say enough good things about this system. EK makes a really nice water block, so. I mean, this, this is a good system, you know, for anybody. So there's some pretty good takeaways from building this system. It's easier than you think, you know. It's, it doesn't take a lot of genius to do it. Um, just thoughtful planning, truthfully. Make sure your case supports it. Measure everything more than once. If you think it's good, measure it again. Um, I modified the res bracket to set it lower in the chassis just in case I decided I wanted to ever go back to an air-cooled card or something maybe out of box when I get a new card I can you know take the water block out for the uh, the uh, GPU and run an air-cooled um, processor or air-cooled GPU in there fantastic though I mean you know these are the things that you kind of want to plan out if you put the loop you know in there and you're like oh the res barely fits you know double check it do it again definitely but all in all under full tilt this thing you know runs fantastically. Um, right now it's sitting at 35 degrees C uh, just at idle um, and under load the i7-2700 at 4.65 gigahertz is 
44, I think, is the hottest it's gotten, and the GPU has never crested 45. In comparison, when I had the H100 on the system, the H100 would regularly, with the same overclock, uh, hit, you know, 70s, 75, 76, it crested 80 once. And, you know, that's... You're going to get that when you do a custom loop. You've got a better radiator, better components. Um, the radiator is bigger, but it also has another component in the loop. So, you know, if you're comparing apples to apples, it's fairly close. Other than that, it's kick-ass. I love this thing. So, if you liked the video, go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment. I really appreciate the feedback. Thanks.